Forget Rolex waitlists and Seiko limited editions. Today I ponder one of the greatest controversies of the modern watch world. Do you really need a watch winder? Seriously, it's up there with the best of them. Hi and welcome to Last Watch. Before I kick off today's review and conversation starter, can I please ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. If you've already subbed, then make sure all your notifications are switched on. Many thanks in advance for joining the Last Watch gang. If you caught my multiple unboxing video in January, then you will have already had a sneak peek at today's watch related product and the subject of today's review. This is the Inklake JG19001. It's a double watch winder which comes courtesy of Watch Winder Mall. Watch Winder Mall are an online retailer specialising in, yes you guessed, watch winders. They stock winders from Gins and Vico, Triple Tree, Arctic Scorpion, Luckdoff and Inklake. You can pick up a Triple Tree leather clad single watch winder for less than $60 or go all out and spend a few thousand dollars on a jewellery safe from Gins and Vico or even an 18 piece Luckdoff in gorgeous walnut. They pretty much have every budget covered. The dual inklet watch winder I have for review sits comfortably at the affordable end of the product range. It has a recommended retail price of $139.99 or just over £100. Well that's before adding any discounts and discounts are readily available. Miranda at Watchwinder Mall has even organised a 15% discount for all of you last watchers out there on any orders over $100. Just use the discount code LASTWATCH15 to save yourself a bit of cash. All Watchwinder Mall products come with a 30 day returns policy and a 2 year guarantee should you need it. If it wasn't already obvious, the Inklet Watchwinder has been sent to me free of charge and I get to keep it regardless of what I have to say in today's review and trust me I won't be holding back. Courtesy of something called FBA, the Inklet Winder was delivered extremely quickly. Watchwinder Mall are a China based company so I expected the winder to take a couple of weeks to arrive. Much to my surprise it was two days door to door. FBA is completely new to me, I even had to do a google search for an explanation. In short, FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon, which basically means that Amazon will store your product across various warehouses in Europe in order to guarantee a quick delivery. And before you American customers start feeling a little bit left out, Watchwinder Mall have informed me that they also have a manufacturing plant in the good old US of A, so you shoppers across the Atlantic will also benefit from quick delivery times on any of their products. If you like shiny things, then you magpies out there will love the Inklake Winder. The box is made from highly polished lacquered pear wood with a pine bark pattern. It has tons of a rich dark warm mahogany. The box has rather deceptive dimensions with a width of 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters and a height of just over 8 inches or 20.5 centimeters. Its base is only 5.5 inches or 14 centimeters deep but due to its 1980s video game cabinet shape and a protruding control knob at the rear, its effective footprint is 1 inch deeper at 9 inches or 23 centimeters. You can nearly double that when you open the display door. At its opening peak, the box measures 10 inches or 25 centimeters in height. You will need to add a few inches more to allow access for your hand in order to open it. You should consider all these measurements before deciding where you're going to place your winder. No point fitting it into a snug slot on your bookshelf if you can't open the damn door. You will also need to factor in the weight limit of your shelf as the winder weighs in at 5.7 pounds or just a little over 2.5 kilos unladen. The display window is 5.5 inches square albeit with rounded corners and is made somewhat disappointingly from acrylic glass. More on that later. The box lid has highly polished silver hinges fitted to its base which I suspect are plated brass. You gain entry to the interior from the top by tipping the lid forward. There are two sturdy internal sidearm supports that hold the door open at a 45 degree angle. I did notice a badly fitted screw 
and what looks like a little lacquer overspill on the left hinge. Both a quick fix. The box lid has two velvet pads on its upper corners to help dampen noise and minimise damage to the lacquer when closing. The interior of the box is lined entirely with a black fall leather, some of which covers the hinge door. As this is a dual watch winder, there are two highly polished piano black cradles fixed around a central rotating point. The inklet comes rather generously with four memory foam cushions, preformed to fit snugly within those cradles, so you get two for use and two spares if required. The cushions are quite large, but your watches can be mounted both vertically and horizontally to accommodate straps and bracelets sized for both large and small wrists. A very simple but effective design idea. The only other thing in the box is an LED strip in the roof which adds a blue glow to a rather barren interior. You may find this hard to believe, but I can be a bit precious with my watches and in order to add a little more protection for my bracelet buckles, I took the liberty of placing some extra foam padding at the base of both those cradles. Go easy on me guys. The inklet winder has a black velvet base to prevent it from sliding around on your shelf. Externally, there is little else to see as all the controls are hidden neatly out of view around the back of the box. This is where you will find its nerve center and power options. The winder comes with a dedicated mains power supply, but it also benefits from a USB adapter, which I have tested with an iPhone charger, and it works a treat. For those of you that have an awkward display area in mind, well away from any power source, the winder can also be powered with two D-sized batteries, tucked away behind this plastic door. This is highly beneficial to those of you who might choose to wind your watches whilst in a lock safe, or in my case, a watch reviewer taking product shots on a rotating base. The battery should last approximately two weeks, less so if you leave the LED light switched on via that big red button. Now bear with me here whilst I explain the winding options via the remaining silver knob and power button. The silver knob, okay, let's call it a switch, has an off position followed by four options for winding your watches, each option has a little diagram which hints at its parameters. Option 1 will turn the cradle clockwise for 2 minutes, rest for 6 minutes, then repeat the process. Option 2 turns counterclockwise for 2 minutes, rests for 6 minutes, then repeats. Option 3 turns clockwise for 2 minutes, rests for 6 minutes, then turns counterclockwise for 2 minutes, rests for 6 minutes, and then repeats. In these first three modes, the winder rotates at a constant 8 turns a minute, resulting in 2,880 turns per day. The fourth option turns clockwise for 5 minutes, then immediately rotates anti-clockwise for 5 minutes. It will do this constantly for 3 hours and then rest for 9 hours. The result is still 2,880 turns per day. All of these options allow for the manner in which your watch is powered by its rotor, as not all rotors wind or even turn in the same direction. Inklake suggests that you wind your watch before placing it in the winder, a kind of warm-up for the movement before it's put through its paces. You might also want to confirm the compatibility of your chosen watch winder with your watch before making any purchases. Lastly, I need to explain this black power button, which totally confused me at first as it seems counterintuitive, but it couldn't be simpler. With the power button switched on, opening the door will automatically stop the cradle from rotating. I guess this is due to a sensor in the hinge. If the power button is switched off, the cradle will continue to rotate when you open the display door. You will need to switch the silver knob to the off position to stop the winder. Look at it as the black power button switching the door sensor on and off. Fully loaded, the winder is relatively quiet in a clockwise rotation. At arm's length, it's barely audible. I have noticed, however, that the winder becomes much louder when the motor turns anti-clockwise. It also struggles when only half loaded. Having just one watch in the winder seems to throw out the balance of the mechanism, again causing the motor to get much more audible when the watch is in its downward rotation. Gravity and weight distribution seem to play their part in the Inklake's performance. As a notoriously light sleeper, I certainly wouldn't consider putting this winder on my bedside table.
The Inclect Dual Watchwinder shows itself for what it is, a budget-friendly option for those considering adding possibly their first watchwinder to their watch collection. It's a North Thrills unit that would certainly benefit from a tempered glass display window and a more plush interior, but overall the box is well finished and makes for an attractive piece of furniture to store your treasured watches in, and it does its job adequately. I did find some dull areas on the external lacquer, which I was unable to polish out. This may have been caused by friction during transport before the varnish was properly set. Its basic interior allows the watchers inside to be the star of the show, but I'm not a great fan of the LED light, or more to the point, its placement. Sitting where it does at the top of the box, it acts as a backlight, silhouetting your timepieces and providing a halo rather than key light effect. I think the light would have been better located in the top of the display lid, providing an improved lighting experience. The acrylic display seems to attract all manner of dust particles, no doubt due to some form of static charge associated with the use of acrylic plastics. There are specialist cleaning fluids available, you might want to add some to your shopping basket. The acrylic is also susceptible to picking up scratches. Sadly, the misplaced LED only serves to highlight any blemishes on the display window. Personally, I've been running the winder in position 1, with the light off and the door sensor on, and it does all I need it to do. The debate of the benefits and drawbacks of watchwinder ownership is not one that I can give you a straight answer to. A bit like watch collecting, it all comes down to personal taste, choice and need. This review will no doubt add more fuel to the fire and continue the argument further. I can't say that I'm a fan of watchwinders. I certainly hadn't considered purchasing one before the kind folks at Watchwinder Mall sent me the ink lake for review. But as a watch reviewer that is running out of places to store an ever-growing collection, the ink lake has been a bit of a godsend. It's not unusual for me to have several watches in a queue waiting to be reviewed. Having the winder has given me additional storage, which also allows me to monitor the performance and accuracy of a couple of those watches while still wearing a third on my wrist. Third world problems, eh? There are many who will tell you that watch winders are the devil's work. Okay, that might be a bit strong. But they would argue it's not necessary for a watch movement to be constantly in motion, as this inevitably creates wear and tear on the movement and leads to shorter service intervals. The most common analogy being that you wouldn't leave a car engine running when you're not driving it. However, if you are someone with a three watch collection on a day to day rotation, then having a dual watch winder might save you some vital minutes at the start of a very busy day that you might otherwise waste setting the time on an unworn watch or one that suffers from a low power reserve. If you happen to be the proud owner of a couple of automatic watches with perpetual calendars, then a watch winder will no doubt be an absolute necessity. If you're dabbling with the idea of picking up an affordable watch winder, or even someone with an extensive collection looking for something special to showcase them in, then watch winder mall might be worth checking out. I'll add a link in the video description below. Just make sure you use my last watch discount should you choose to make any purchases. The benefit is entirely yours, as I'm not on any kickback from Watchwinder Mall. If you're a fan of Watchwinders, or even if you consider them to be a waste of time and money, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Many thanks to Watchwinder Mall for sending me the ink lake for review. It's much appreciated. To the rest of you, thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Now where am I going to put this box?